Greetings YouTube and welcome to another weapons build. Um, years ago I saw a picture and I can't remember if it was an actual illustration picture of an object or if it was an illustration from a post-apocalyptic game of some variety but it was a crowbar that had a saw blade attached to it and I thought I'd give that a try. Now this is an old bo broken crowbar. This the the end's gone, and um, it's got a slight bend to it. But I kind of like the the lived-in look, if you know what I mean. Again, I'm going for the post-apocalyptic vibe. It's got a used saw blade. So what I've done is I've drawn a rough line here because this is going to go there. So this edge will be the live edge. This will be missing, and I'll be attaching this this to this with these brackets. And these brackets were originally designed for conduit mounting. I'm giving them a new life, if you will. So they're gonna go like this. So you'll end up with one probably there, one probably there, and then maybe one at the top, like that. So you get three points of attachment, and it will be holding the, the, the blade centered on the shaft and because it's going to go over this as well as be held in those three spots well actually it won't be held here it'll be held here so maybe only two yeah I mean I may only be able to do two we'll see how that works I don't have a tip down here <laughs> do I no I don't all right <laughs> we're learning as we go um, so I don't think it's gonna be a problem as far as movement is concerned this is going to be a heavy object. This is a crowbar. It's got a lot of energy behind it. And putting this, this saw blade on there definitely is going to like create grievous wounds, which of course is kind of the, again, the kind of the job I am making a weapon intentionally. So first thing I got to do is probably make a cut here as a relief, just to plunge with the, with the grinder, angle grinder, and then start working my way towards it. And then so I got that and then just start hogging the rest out with a with a, a grind wheel and then uh, a flap wheel to get the to get the shape I want and then fit it to the to the um, crowbar itself so I can get as close to it possible to get this to fit to that. That's my goal. All right, so it's a bunch of grinding. It's gonna be noisy, lots of sparks, you know, but I, I do so enjoy it. So we're at an intermediate step here. I've got, that was my first cut, and then I came and did this one, and then I did this one. So now we're down to a single cut. I thought I'd let you see how I did this. Um, and th this was a plunge, and this was a plunge, and then this one I just came in here, came in like that, and then I uh, let the, walked the, walked the angle grinder up, and let it just do its work. Let the angle grinder do its thing. Let the let the cutting blade work the metal. Don't force it because you end up slowing the process down and you're increasing the danger. So just let the, the, the tool do the job it's supposed to do. Getting out of the way of the tool is a hard lesson to learn. I'm glad I learned it but it took me a while to get there. So here's the rough opening, and that's where this is going to go when I'm done. Obviously, this is not the final fitting. I'm gonna to need to get a bunch of stuff off of there, off the left side. I've taken off the bulk, so now it's going back, now it's gonna be to the flap wheel and just start fine tuning things. I'm probably gonna bring that left side up pretty close to that red line, and then come back and do, uh, do another fitting. This one doesn't look too bad. I may only have to tweak that a little bit to get that in there. And then of course I need to play with the arch a bit to get the arch to snug up. Cause I'd like to get it as close as I can. It's never gonna be like a seal or anything, but I'd like to get it to look decent. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna leave that in that position or will I cut some of that off. That'll probably be a decision at the end. Maybe even after I get the whole thing assembled so I can really get an assessment of what I think think how aesthetically it looks, if it looks balanced or not, visually. Okay, so now it's to the flap wheel. 
And there we have the final shape. It's not perfect. I took a little bit too much off of this section, but I'm not gonna, I could move this out and it's close enough. And I discovered that I can actually get one clamp here, one here, and then one here. So that's awesome. That means I got three points. Three points is always better than two. Um, so now it's going to be taking this off, putting uh, this, the brackets and the blade and the, and the whole thing together into one component. And so I can lay out where I want my holes for the, uh, for the bolts to go. And then it's just a matter of assembly, really. After I get that done, it just the, the drilling the holes is going to be the last step, um, which was which is nice. And the brackets don't come with nuts because this actually acts as a nut. This kind of oddly shaped hole right there. But obviously, I'm going to add nuts because I want I want a lot more uh, pressure on this than these things had originally been intended to uh, uh, to be used in the real world. Because when you're just setting up conduits. You know, you're mounting this against a, a wall like this, and then you're using this for the conduit like that. So you don't need a lot of, a lot of energy to do that, but I do. So I'll be adding a nut to this. And like I said earlier, I actually had to break down um, and buy a box of tw quarter 20 nuts because I, uh, I done run out. I have more bolts than nuts. That's, the, that's not a good combination. They got to have one of each. Alrighty. So Time for layout and then hole drilling. Now they, there we go. We have the blade mounted. Um, I, again, I, I put quarter 20 nuts on here. These are quarter 20 bolts. So these are now nice and tight, something that they would not have been under normal circumstances because again, these are just for mounted conduit. Um, but these things are sticking out way too far from my taste. So I am going to take my angle grinder and get my uh, cutoff blade out and, uh, and uh, take these bolts down so they're, so they're flush with the nuts. I've been changing the blades on my angle grinder today like mad. I thought I was done with it, so I took my headphones and my apron off, so those are going back on now because it's very loud and my, I need my goggles to keep my, my, eyes, my eyes protected. But I like the way this, and I like the way I, I did this, and um, I, I could have cleaned this up, but I didn't want to. I Again, I like that raw aesthetic patina on it. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I may wrap this just for fun. So we're gonna see, we're gonna get to take care of the bolts first. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it in hand, see how I think it feels. And then maybe I'll consider putting a wrap on it just for fun. I have reached an impasse. I decided I do wanna wrap this. Problem, this lovely patina that I enjoy so much means that when I wrap it, I can't pull the cord through the wrapping to make the knot at the end because they're just, this is too rusty. There's just, it's just too much friction between the wrap I've placed on it and the cord that I need to pull through to make the knot at the top. So I may have to remove the patina on two of these faces because I kind of had the cord run along this spine here. So if I polish out this section and this section till it's nice and smooth, I shouldn't have to do the rest because the rest, I want the rest as the rest as f f traction for the wrapping itself. So I want that to keep that the wrapping in place. So I don't want this to completely smooth. But if I do these two faces, then I should be able to pull that off. So it's back with the safety gear because I again took it off because I thought I was done with that because the blade is mounted and it looks nice and it works. Now it's back to put my flat wheel on, which I removed so I could cut off the bolts. <sighs> well, I might as well polish off the end of the bolts now that I'm gonna have the flat wheel in there. It'll look nice when I'm done. This is frustrating. Alrighty, so Best laid pans of plans of mice and men and mad scientists in their basement. All right, I had to, I wrapped it a second time after having polished the shaft and it was still wouldn't work because I, I guess I was just wrapping it too tight. So I did it a third time. I wrapped it much more loosely. You can actually see some unevenness, but that's the only way I was able to get the inner piece to pull through and make a knot on this end. So I'm happy. 
Um, so I'm happy with this this particular design. I've been playing with this idea in my head of making my own for years, a couple of years now. And I, and I, I got this a couple of years ago and I got a collection. I'm actually almost, I think I'm almost out of big blades. I think I'm out of 10 inches. I have my one left. The rest are all smaller, so I may have to start scrounging around for some larger blades and, uh, and uh, for future projects, because I do like them. Um, I, it's, it is kind of sucky that these are very bright, but, you know, I, I couldn't find brackets like that that had a patina. Alrighty, so go, out go outside and get some pictures, and then this project is done.